Eero, I think, in Finland, at least I think that's how to pronounce it. He writes to me, he says, hey Paul, if you uh, ever played an instrument, I would love to hear it. Also, do you sing? And if you do, I would love to hear it too. <laughs> Eero, let me tell you something. You do not want to hear me sing. I promise you, I don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> I, I cannot hold a tune. I can't, what is it called, carry a tune? I can't even say the right words. I, I am, am, here's the interesting thing. I have excellent tonal recognition of when somebody else hits even the slightest off frequency note. I can tell instantly you're off key, instantly. And, and not a lot of people, well, I don't know if a lot of people can do it or not, but most people I've met don't have the ear that I have to hear when somebody's off key. I hear when I sing that I am off key. I don't have a mechanism of, of I have, I recognize it, but I can't do anything about it. <laughs> Like, yeah, like, ah, get, oh man, you don't want to hear me sing. So, <laughs> but as far as an instrument, I used to play the trumpet. And my father was a really good trumpet player. And I played the trumpet in the high school band for many years. In fact, I was the guy, at the time, probably the nerd would be a better way to put it that at our junior high school, Kramer, Ele uh, not elementary, Kramer, Kramer Junior High, yeah, in Placentia, California. I don't know if it's still there or not. And they would do a flag raising ceremony every morning. And I would do the da 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 you know, raise the flag, everybody was, had to sit up there and salute or put their hand to their heart. That's kind of what we did back then in, in, our, in, our, <laughs> in our drone days. And um, got made fun of a lot, but it was kind of a big deal for me. That was my, my big solo appearance in the musical world, was, was playing whatever that uh, track is that I just terribly sung for you. So that's about it. I did spend some amount of time, number of years, on the synthesizer. And of course, that was designing and building musical synthesizers. I don't know how many of you read my book, 99% True. It's, it's my memoirs. And if you have, you'll know that in 99% True, I talk about before PS Audio got started, I had started a company called Infinitizer, and the goal there, my life's dream, was to design and build the world's first polyphonic synthesizer. Because back then, in the 70s, they were one note wonders. It, it was a voltage controlled keyboard, and every time you hit a, a note, it was one note, and the synthesizer played it. So everything you hear with Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and all that, that's on those one note Moogs, right? And I thought, Gosh, if I could figure out a way, which I did, to build a 10 key so you could have, you know, bas it was basically it was 10 synthesizers with a multiplex keyboard. So I multiplexed the keyboard, did the, uh, every time it hit a key, it would find it, it would identify what note that was, create a voltage that could drive the voltage controlled oscillator, and you could hit up to 10 keys at once and I made the, the world's first polyphonic synthesizer. I sold, got my first customer, which was then Walter Carlos, who later became Wendy Carlos, a very famous musician. And Walter at the time was my first customer and was ready to put down the bucks, but then everything fell apart. And I won't do a spoiler alert. So. It's all in 99% True if you ever want to read it. And 99% and True is available through psaudio.com or you can go to Amazon. And I even did a, an audiobook version of that. So, all right, enough about me. Thanks for the question. And no, you do not want to hear me sing. Guaranteed. All right, bye. <laughs>